Perhaps you're a, an avid shortwave listener or a, an AMDXer, and uh, you're looking for a, a, a software-defined radio to use with your computer. Well, we're going to compare a couple today, so stay tuned. Well, the two solutions we're going to look at today are the new ELEC up converter, and it has to work in conjunction with um, a standard SDR type dongle, like this one. This is the NESDR Smart. And the reason for that is that the, the dongle is only capable of, um, of receiving UHF and VHF. So what this box does is it up converts uh, to VHF all the frequencies from long wave through AM up to short wave, up to 30 megahertz. And then the two of these connect together by a cable, an SMA to SMA cable, and the RF comes in on into the converter on this side to another SMA. And USB uh, is used for powering up this. So you'd have to be plug this probably into another port on your computer somewhere and this one would be on a different one. So what we're going to compare the Hammett up with is this. This is the RSPDX from a company called SDR Play. This is a kind of a premium receiver in their lineup. So let's compare performance of these two guys. What you're looking at here is the SDR Sharp software. It's uh, being fed by the Nuelec NESDR Smart dongle. And that dongle in turn is receiving RF from the Nuelec Hammett Up um, Up Converter. And what that allows you to do is listen to frequencies from long wave up through short wave that you can't normally get with the NESDR Smart dongle. So you, the first thing you might notice up here is why have we got 125 megahertz dialed up? Well, 125 megahertz is the frequency that the Hammett up, up converter converts everything to. So in other words, what we're looking at with this big ugly spike here at 125 megahertz is actually considered zero frequency or DC. So anything to the right of it, you're going up in frequency. So I'll give you an example if we add one to this, one megahertz. We're now in the AM band, as you can see these, uh, all these are AM stations that are, you know, essentially 10 kilohertz apart. So one of the things you wanna do is, first of all, set this or open this settings box. And what I've found just through, you know, playing with this thing is that, first of all, use the AGC and I found that RTL AGC works better than Tuner AGC. And because this, uh, this particular converter is very susceptible to lo local strong AM interference, uh, I found that I have to keep the, the gain down around the 20 mark, 20 dB mark. So if we go up, you can see all this artifact starting to come in here, all these spikes that, that really are not there. So I'll show you one other thing here. If we go up to, let's say, 125.060, we're now actually tuned to 60 kilohertz. It's a very, very low RF frequencies, but it's right on the bottom end of the long wave band. And you can see that little spike in there. And that corresponds, that's actually being transmitted by WWV in Colorado. And that signal synchronizes the uh, wall clock that you have that says it's an atomic clock and it gets actually gets its signal from that point. Now these spikes that are going up and down intermittently that's just due to local interference. So looking at long wave on the RSP DX on SDR Uno software you can see that same uh, zero frequency spike there and uh, for some reason it's, well, there it is, it's very weak, but there you can see the WWV signal coming through. Uh, now this is a maximum gain, and you'll notice there's some other spikes here. If I click on one of those spikes and turn up the volume, you'll hear some broadcast feed through. So this 
This uh, setup isn't perfect either. If I back off the gain a bit, those spikes more or less disappear. But then, of course, so does the sensitivity. So if we go up um, a little further into where the non-directional beacons typically can be found, uh, around 353 or so, I think one of them is. And if we bring the gain back up, up you can hear that that beacon there's another one over here another one there so they are audible but also over here I've got a little broadcast spike coming in there that is not a desirable signal so unfortunately, we have to crank the gain back a little bit there. So a long wave is not particularly usable um, in North America. We don't have any broadcast stations down here anyway, as I said earlier. So there's a feature on SDR Uno that's very handy. And this is called a medium wave uh, and FM notch. If you're in Europe and you've got digital audio broadcasting, there's a notch for it as well. Watch what happens to that little spike we have highlighted down there when I turn that on. It effectively kills it, but it also, uh, if we go up to the medium wave portion of the band, I'll turn that off for a second. You can see all the, all the AM radio stations to show you how effective this is at notching out the AM band. It's gone completely. And probably if uh, I were to tune up to the FM portion as well, but we're just looking at long wave, medium wave, and, and short wave at this point. So you would use this filter if you were, say, on the HF bands and you had a what was clearly a an AM station coming through because you had a strong local AM radio market. Uh, you just flick this on, and it would certainly notch out uh, any interfering station. Well, here in North America, the long wave band is is not used very much. It's certainly not used for broadcasting. It's used for what's called non-directional beacons at airports, but even they're disappearing. So we're going to go right up to the AM band here, and I'm tuned to a, a local station, which is uh, called is on 980 kilohertz. So it's 125.980. Just wanted to show you why. Uh, I don't like this particular converter. It's got a, a little bit of a quirk to it. I, it doesn't deal with strong signals in uh, the AM band very well. Now, if I'm gonna just tune off for a second, and you notice I'm tuning down in frequency, so all the you'd expect all the spikes to go to the right, which you see with our main radio station there. But there's this one spike that's going in the opposite direction. And this shows up a number of times when I'm tuning in AM stations. And if we uh, give this a little volume, hopefully you can hear this. As I tune this radio station in, you may hear a heterodyne between the two signals. Yeah, that little tone. Now it's a very low frequency rumbly sound. And now that spike is going out to the right here. So that spike is likely due to another strong local radio station, and it's an image. And so, and and that you can tell it's an image because if you tune one way and everything, all the signals seem to move in that one direction, you'll see this other spike moving in the opposite direction. That means it's an image. So just quickly uh, going through the AM band with the. RSPDX. Oops. And clear tonight, minus 11. Tomorrow. Sounds quite clean. No heterodynes like there were with the. Uh, and I've had to back the gain off a little bit because of getting an overload indication, so. 
Even with the, the game back down, there's still plenty of stations on here. Time is running out. Now we're up in the uh, 40 meter band, uh, listening to some single side band. You can see we're on an even kilohertz here, and yet the voices sound a little squawky. So let's just see if we can put a correction in there. So about 60 hertz off, uh, at least in my uh, particular converter. If the crystals, the oscillator is not going to be perfect. So let's put this back up where it was. And we can use this frequency correction function down here. To compensate for that for to an extent. So that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, the sensitivity uh, seems to be pretty good on, on this device. Now we're in 40 meters, and you'll notice that even when we're right on the exact kilohertz, the audio sounds good. So we don't have the same drift problem that uh, the new Elec had. Okay, we're in the uh, 19 meter band, broadcast band, uh, we're on AM, and you notice we've added about 15 megahertz plus 595 kilohertz, so this is a 15.595 uh, megahertz uh, radio signal. And you notice we can still hear that little heterodyne in there, if we tune around. There is a very low tone. So we're getting that annoying heterodyne even up on the short wave bands. So, and once again, uh, if I set this to 15.595, I can uh, zero that. You notice we're still hearing the heterodyne and it looks like our peak is a little off of where it should be. So once again, we can provide some frequency correction there, and you can hear that low frequency heterodyne, so we know we're pretty close to being exactly on frequency. Okay, we're in the same band, the 19 meter band, we're on a different frequency now, a stronger signal, and you can really hear that low frequency heterodyne. If I change the correction here, change pitch. That kind of makes this um, a bit unusable for broad for pleasant broadcast listening. Anyway, we'll get rid of that a few hertz up there. It's not going to make much difference. But here's what happens when we crank the gain above that 20 dB mark. Start getting other stations mixing in with it. Uh, probably this adjacent station, which is a religious station. So that <laughs> doesn't work very well. And looking at the RSPDX operating on the 19 meter band, we've picked a relatively weak station here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And uh, no heterodynes or anything like that. As we tune around, you can't hear that uh, that squeal as we as we tune up and down, like we did on the new elect. And let's just turn on the synchronous AM here versus AM. Very hard to tell if it's actually helping or not, but it's a nice feature to have. So we're at 10 megahertz right now on WWV. Uh, you can see it's a fair size spike. This is on SDR Sharp using the new elect. And I'd like to compare that with um, the SDR Play device on uh, SDR Uno. And you can, if I turn the volume up, 
There's some deep fades and it tends to um, get very difficult to hear the tones. And this is midday, so 10 megahertz is not gonna be great. So if we crank up the gain, now all of a sudden we're hearing this station bleeding through into the audio off of WWV. So once again, we're restricted to keeping the gain back down, in my case anyway, around 20.7, or around 20 dB anyway. And there's the audio. Okay, now we're at 10 megahertz again, this time on SDR Uno using the RSPDX. And you can see we've got a kind of an equivalent strength tone there. Let's zoom in a little bit. And the audio is coming through. Just crank it up a bit. Now, one of the features on SDR Uno that you don't get, as far as I know, on SDR Sharp is this um, synchronous AM. And I don't know that it really will help in this case, but it's meant to help you with deep fades on uh, AM signals. It tends to keep the volume somewhat constant as best that it can. But we can hear the audio from WWV. So not a lot of difference between this and the uh, new Alec at uh, sort of mid-band in uh, on the HF bands. But the difference is uh, I've got the gain up as high as I can get it uh, on SDR Uno, and it's uh, I'm not getting any of that bleed through from this adjacent station that I was getting with SDR Sharp. Thought I'd point out a flaw that I found in the RSPDX uh, SDR Uno combination here. See all this activity here? We're looking between uh, between two and three megahertz. Now we know the uh, two to three megahertz segment is pretty much dead and uh, there's not a lot of activity and there's just a WWV on 2.5 and there's some uh, some Coast Guard stuff but not very much but uh, let me turn the volume up and click in this area here let's zoom in here What you're hearing is the 40 meter amateur band, an image of it being reflected down into this part of the, the spectrum in the two to three megahertz spectrum. And that is absolutely not right. And I have put in a ticket with the company and heard nothing back from them in many, many weeks. So. Maybe this is common amongst the SDR receivers, I don't know. But it does depend on whether you have, what kind of, let me zoom out again, on what kind of IF uh, selection you make within SDR Uno. There's zero IF and low IF. This is zero IF and you notice that most of it just disappears, I think, if I'm not mistaken. You are, we're still getting some broadcast feed through here, up toward the high end. There's the station. There is no broadcasting taking place in that band, but I can hear some speech. Now, using the medium wave uh, FM notch doesn't take it out, so it's from within the HF band itself that we're, we're getting this. And you can hear some voices there. And there's another one over here. So again, um, I have no resolution to that problem. Um, Let's go back to the low IF again and uh, zoom out. And you see these broadcast stations come right up again. 
That is clearly a shortwave station. But if you reduce the gain enough so that they go away, it's, it's not usable. So here are my conclusions. So on long wave, um, I wouldn't uh, bother using either one unless you live in Europe where there's uh, long wave broadcasting. I wouldn't have too high an expectation from either of these RSP solutions. And in terms of uh, the medium wave or AM broadcast band, uh, the RSPDX obviously came out on top because the uh, new ELEC uh, had this uh, terrible little hot heterodyne which you just couldn't seem to get rid of no matter what. Even if you jockey the gain control, it's still there. And you can see it on the display, on the spectral display as you tune up and down. You can see this little errant signal going the opposite way to every other signal. Uh, on HF single sideband, there's not a lot of difference between the two. So if that's your focus, you know, just listening to the handbands or whatever, uh, knock yourself out. Either one will do. Um, and considering that uh, the new ELEC is a problem, if you consider that you've got to buy the dongle with it, um, it's about uh, half the price of the RSPDX, uh, approximately. Um, the same problem with heterodyne seems to persist in the AM, or sorry, in the shortwave AM broadcast band realm. I still heard heterodynes on the new ELEC, whereas the uh, RSPDX was perfectly clean. And um, yeah, there's some shortcomings in, in, in both of them. And uh, <clears throat> the main one, obviously, in the, uh, the Hammett up is that you've when you're using it, you have to actually physically add to 125 megahertz whatever frequency it is you want to tune to. So that's a bit of a pain. Um, and obviously, the, the problem with the heterodynes and the tendency to um, overload if the gain's too high um, and you know, creating intermod, that's a definite uh, uh, downside to, the, to using the new ELEC. But the RSPDX is not perfect either, and I did point out that uh, I had an issue with uh, images that were um, uh, coming in. Uh, particularly, I noticed between two and three megahertz, but I think I saw it on other bands as well. And uh, that depends on which IF mode, the, the ZIF or the ZIF and the LIF modes, uh, those will determine whether or not you see that problem. So that's it, and uh, I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel, and hopefully we'll have more like this coming up soon. Thanks for watching.